Morning, Doug. Morning, Dwayne. Thanks for coming out. Glad to be here. We're on a beautiful property in central Oklahoma in the Cross Timbers. Uh, probably pretty typical of what a, a lot of you hunt on or, or perhaps manage wildlife on. And Doug, would you tell us just a little bit about this property? Yeah, this is a, a property that I actually was able to purchase uh, about a year ago, a little over a year ago. And uh, we actually bought it for recreational purposes, for hunting and fishing and, and kind of enjoying the outdoors. And, and so that's our whole main goal of, of this property. And this property, uh, like a lot of places, needs some work. And so we're going to be showing some resource concerns specific to wild turkey, but that will also benefit lots of non-game species uh, that people are interested in. And we're going to follow this property over time and show you how it transitions to be better turkey and, and overall wildlife habitat. Yeah. And the first thing I'd like to really look at is, is the eastern red cedar problem we have out in our open areas. Let's go take a look. So. Like a lot of properties in this part of the world, it's been fire suppressed for a long yep. time. And cedar is, uh, comes up in those areas because it, it, it thrives in areas that don't have fire. And yep. so the cross timbers we think of as an oak forest, but it also has a lot of patchwork of open areas, yep. which is really important for wild turkey. And it is. And this, this is one prime example of, of some of those open areas that have grown up in cedars. And uh, this is an area that I would like to improve the turkey habitat on. Uh, and a lot of it is gonna be removing these eastern red cedars. So you're starting kind of with the limiting factor on this property. That's the most important thing to address. That's right. And I, I just wanna, I wanna, and it's probably the easiest and gonna see the most benefit from right off the bat mm -hmm. is by removing these eastern red cedars and improving the nesting and brooding habitat on this property. So it's probably important to mention why this is a problem for wild turkey. Um, obviously right now there's still a lot of grass and forbs around these cedars, but over time they're going to fill in and they will shade out all the desirable plants that turkeys nest and feed in and it will become non-habitat for wild turkey. And in fact, even right now, a turkey is going to give this area a wide berth because they're not going to want to walk through the middle of those cedars where they can't see. They're very paranoid and they're very conscious of potential predators and they're not gonna spend much time in this area. So you could make a lot more of this land support turkeys just by removing these cedar. Yep. yep. So Doug, the last time we were here, it looked dramatically different. There were lots of standing uh, eastern red cedar. So you've been busy. Yeah, we actually had, had a grinder come in and grind the eastern red cedars out of this upland area, this, this open area. Um, I would have clipped them, but it was just with them skeletons sitting out here, the turkeys seemed to kind of avoid them, and so I just wanted to eliminate them completely uh, by just going in there and grinding them. So are you going to follow up with any management after? Uh, like prescribed fire now? Yeah, we will. I want to definitely keep those cedars gone out of this area, so I'll follow up with a fire probably this spring, early spring, late winter, and uh, to tr try and keep these cedars gone. Dwayne, this is the tree I was talking about that I think could be a pretty good roost site for turkeys. Uh, it's got those big horizontal branches. It's got a creek below it. It's kind of on a slope. Uh, I think the turkeys would start utilizing this as a roost site if it just had some clearing done and cleaning out from under it. And, Cause and, you don't see any turkey use right now. Yeah, we don't get any turkeys to use this site particularly, but um, it's definitely could, has the potential. And when we look around, there's a lot of cedar in the understory and it's pretty dense. And I would imagine that a turkey feels pretty uh, cautious about pitching off in the morning. I mean, most yeah. of you have probably turkey hunted and you see that gobbler sitting up on the limb checking the whole world out in the morning, thinking about flying down. They're looking for any potential danger. And in a situation like this, um, they really can't see what they're yeah. pitching down into. And I think this is something that we can, can really benefit and uh, try and get them to start roosting in this spot. Uh, but it's just gonna take a little bit of work and, and some, some sweat equity. And there's a nice open area uh, in front of us where the turkeys would likely want to go forage and preen and strut. So you're going to try to connect that existing open area to this roost tree by thinning out these cedars and getting it in a more open understory. Yeah. Well, Dwayne, this is a, a potential roost site that I had found that was really overgrown with cedars. 
Um, and I actually had a mulcher come in here and mulch all the cedars out of it, left all the hardwoods, and uh, hoping that the turkeys would maybe use this as a, as a roost site. Yes, yeah, this is, looks dramatically different than last time we were here. I mean, we couldn't find any place to stand where we could even look at the audience. And, and now, uh, you know, it's very open. I can imagine a turkey feeling secure, wanting to pitch down in the morning out of this tree and not have to worry about a bobcat eating it. Doug, we're walking down one of your uh, roads here that also serves yeah. as a fire break. Yeah, this is this is my fire break where I can burn in two different units. Okay. And so I can don't have to necessarily burn these together, but uh, it definitely has grown in. Uh, I've only had it a year, and, and this was a previous road. I'm using it as a road and a fire break, but I'm also wanting to widen it. It's grown in. I'm kind of wanting to widen it uh, so I can get my vehicles down it, but also it's muddy. It, it always stays muddy and uh, it really needs to dry out. So the extra sunlight is going to help with road maintenance by keeping this drier so that you can use it more. But it also benefit wildlife. Right now there's not much sunlight here and we pick these plants out in an open area but these are some things that we want to show up for turkey and this is a daisy flea bane. Uh, they eat the, the flowers off the top. Deer love this during early summer. It's a very important deer forage. Black-eyed Susan, another really important deer forage. In fact, they've eaten the blooms off of it. And the yeah. blooms are very attractive to insects that turkeys use. So by widening this and getting more sunlight, we will benefit turkey as well. Yeah, and also they don't feel safe walking down this road. Uh, that's just so grown in and the turkeys, they like to be able to see. Um, in fact, one actually got got hit by a bobcat or something this fall by walking down this road. Okay. So I do want to widen this up to make it a little bit more predator friendly for, for turkeys too. And by widening it, they, they'll feel safe to travel down this road. And so you, you said you were going to do this, I think, with a dozer, uh, but you're probably going to talk to the operator about where he puts the blade. Yeah, yeah I definitely don't want him to take the topsoil off. So uh, leaving the blade up a little bit in order to just push the tree down, leave the seed bank and soil there uh, is going to be beneficial because there does water does travel through this road and uh, it drains from a neighboring pond. So we have to keep this vegetated as much as possible. So I don't want him to a lot of disturbance and cause a bunch of soil erosion. So I do want him to leave the soil and leave the blade off the ground and mushrooms just to push the trees over. That sounds good. Okay. So it looks like you've had a mechanical mulcher in here and widened this road. And what was the purpose of that, Doug? It, well, it's a couple of purposes. Uh, one of them was to maintain the road. Uh, this area stayed pretty wet, and so it helped to dry the dry the the ground out. Okay. Uh, but it also provided. Uh, kind of a travel corridor for the turkeys. They feel safer going down this wider road. And it looks like a side benefit of widening this road, letting the sunlight in, is similar to what we expect to see in the forest thinning, is that we've gotten a lot of desirable flowering plants that have come up uh, and, and you didn't have to plant these. Yeah, this, this was all native, come back naturally. Um, and it's also my fire break. So um, I'll probably come in and mow this about once a year to try and keep the brush from coming back up. I want to keep it and maintain it as a road and a fire break as I'm using for my prescribed fires. Okay. So we've been able to show you several things on this property that you could implement on your own property. Everything from forest thinning, food plot management, road widening, prescribed fire, roost site management. Um, and Hopefully, you know, we've inspired you to try to increase the, the wildlife potential of your property. And I know, Doug, that you're going you're gonna to enjoy in the next few years seeing increased turkey use and, and hopefully good hunting on this property. I hope so. But if you are interested in doing some of these practices or don't know quite where to start, you might contact the Oklahoma Department of Wildlife or the National Wild Turkey Federation and have a biologist come out and look at your property and, and give you some ideas. Well, all right. Where are you taking me to lunch? Well, it's a little ways away, but it's a really good restaurant. All right. I'm ready. I'm starving. <laughs>